Hello everyone, welcome you all for the third model. This is a lecture series on wind tunnel techniques. Myself Sivaraman, Assistant Professor, Department of Aeronautical Engineering from Hindustan College of Engineering Technology. In this model, we are going to learn about calibration and measurements taken in wind tunnels. Calibration. So, calibration is a very, very primary and important process to maintain the system accuracy. So, if we have an instrument in your laboratory, so we have to calibrate the instrument per, per each time period if you want to maintain it in a good manner or accuracy manner. So, this will help you to avoid errors after the experiment is done. Why calibration is needed? To ensuring the accuracy, to control the errors, to help the assure precise machine. As I told you already, if you want to avoid the errors after doing your experiment, after doing your calculations, you have to calibrate the instrument before starting it. While doing the calibration in your internal, you have to make some measurement to compare the calibration values compared to the standard values. When you are comparing the standard values and the calibration values, you find some errors, you find some differences when you are comparing it. So if the difference is not more than one, so it is negligible, so you no need to calibrate the system. So the system is calibrated, calibrated decently. If you are not calibration, if you are not calibrating or you need to calibrate means the difference will be very much higher, not in a negligible level. So these are the properties which is to be taken while doing the calibration as speed, low angularity, turbulence measurement. As speed or speed setting. As speed or speed setting is nothing but when you want to have normal speed or uh, optimal speed inside the sketch section, we have to measure the speed before starting or before calibrating. This as speed, as speed measurement will help you to know the how much the speed of the flow in the test section. So we have to keep this feedback tube inside the test section. This feedback tube will help you the help you to know the as speed or speed in our test section. The next measurement is flow angularity or flow direction. The flow angularity or flow direction we need two devices called sphere type diameter and glass type diameter. This sphere type diameter or glass type diameter will be placed in the test section when the model is not there in the test section. So we have to keep your test section empty while doing all the calibration, whether it is a force measurement or a flow direction measurement or turbulence measurement. You don't need to keep your model in your test section while doing the calculation for calibration. So in this flow angularity measurement, the flow direction which is parallel to the tunnel axis will be measured using this sphere tape and flat tape diameter. So when you are converting the turbulence flow into the laminar flow, the flow inside the test section should be laminar and the stream length should be parallel to the axis that will be measured in flow angularity. This one is turbulence measurement. Turbulence measurement is a very very important one because in the test section the flow will should be laminar. If it is not laminar, if it is turbulence only means you can't take the measurement easily because in the turbulence flow we can't do any proper measurement inside our test section. So we have to know the intensity of turbulence inside the, inside the test section using this formula that is RE equal to TF into RE. RE means FT Reynolds number, TF means turbulence factor, RE means Reynolds number. Why we are using this Reynolds number again and again means Reynolds number is a measurement or a property which is used to define whether the flow is turbulence or laminar. If the, if the Reynolds number is more than 4000, the flow is turbulence. If the Reynolds number is less than 4000, the flow is laminar. So, Reynolds number is a very very important factor issue to determine whether the flow is laminar or turbulence. So, here we are using this formula in order to find out the turbulence intensity inside the city section. The next one is pressure measurement. So pressure measurement is also an important measurement. Here we are going to use two devices, one is called manometer and barometer. There is another device called pressure transducer, which is which is 
completely different from manometer and barometer first one is manometer so manometer is a very very ancient instrument which is used in all the laboratories to, to find out the man find out the pressure we can use this manometer for find out all the pressure static pressure dynamic pressure and the atmospheric pressure but we are using this manometer for finding out only the static pressure so the sensitivity instrument depends on density of liquid used in manometer why i am saying this is the sensitivity of the liquid we have to use mercury inside this manometer because if you know if you are using uh, oil or uh, any other water means the density will not give you the exact answer so if you are using a mercury which is having the less very less density when compared to water will give you the good values of pressure so normally they are using in large laboratory they are using only the mercury to find out the pressure so this is our pressure gauge so this is also used to find out the pressure next one is barometer so manometer both end will be open in manometer here in barometer only one end will be open only other end will be closed here only only open so other end is closed in our barometer barometer is a device used to find out the atmospheric pressure not other pressure like static pressure or dynamic pressure so this barometer is specifically used for finding out the atmospheric pressure so this is a reservoir when you are keeping this barometer here means whatever the pressure is built in on the water will be going inside it so this will help you to find out the atmospheric pressure pressure transducers are another important device used to find out the pressure it is a very very advanced device when compared to barometer or manometer here we are going to use only the sensors to find out the pressure that sensors pressure measure the pressure will be converted into electrical signal or analog signal there are more advantages when you comparing this to manometer and other 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 pressure gauge this we can measure rapid pressure and uh, very very small spaces you know for constructing this pressure transducer and uh, the signal whatever applied applied in the pressure transducer will be recorded by the data acquisition system this is a very very adv advanced system then next one is wind tunnel balances this wind tunnel balance are used to find out the force find out the force this is done in our uh, test section so whatever the more or less experience in the pressure will be measured by the uh, wind tunnel balances the wind tunnel balances is very very advanced devices it is measuring the forces in accurate high accuracy manner so there are three types of balances one is three, three component the next one is six component and external balances three component balances means we can measure the pressure at three points of the test section six component means we can measure the forces in six points so so we have to keep six points like uh, a b c d e f so in all the six points if you want to measure the pressure you can use the six component balances devices to find out the force the next one is external balances external balances means if you want to find out the force occurred outside the test section we can find using this external balance devices this is a very very advanced system in component comparing to three component six component balances it is designed to be compact and very very rigid Thank you all for watching this morning.